What's up? It's Juice Beats, and I'm back again with another race video. This one is the Hincappy Spring Series, and this is the second day for me uh, in the weekend on uh, February 26th. And uh, this is being held at the Rock Hill Criterium course. What's different here is we are going clockwise this time and uh, instead of counterclockwise like we normally do. So a little bit different direction here. And uh, this is a 40 minute plus two lap race and it is category four and five or the uh, category four and novice race and let's see i average 26 miles per hour an average of 303 watts with a 303 normalized power as well and a max of 1359 watts um as you can see if you saw my last video a little bit different here we are it's it's not raining and uh the weather looks definitely much better here so um, yeah, dry conditions, obviously it was still a little bit cold um, outside. So uh, this time, instead of going um, with just a long sleeve top, I decided to put my uh, leggings on for this one just to keep my legs a little bit warmer. And here we go. Decent start. Probably could have pushed it a little bit more to get up closer to the front right there, but uh, I am just uh, trying to kind of sit in for the first few laps and uh, kind of see how everything plays out with as many guys as there are um, in this race and also how many teams there are in this race. Um, I didn't want to go out too crazy at first. I, I kind of wanted to see what um, I guess what plans all these teams had um, and we are off to a fast start already at 33 miles an hour and one of the things about going clockwise on this course is you know i thought it was going to be a little bit slower because there is a portion where it is uphill but it, and it's more gradual um than the other way the other way is kind of a, a steep uphill and then um you're kind of climbing until the finish line a little bit uh, the other way is a little bit more gradual and I think it kind of flattens out just a little bit and because of the amount of speed that you carry from the get-go you are able to carry that speed up the hill a lot more which I didn't really know about um, before I got into the race here and even in my warm-up I didn't feel like I was carrying that much uh, speed but I also wasn't going as fast as we're going here in the race So I'm carrying almost 30 miles an hour here up this hill and then I'm kind of running into a wall here and you see if you can kind of see just past there um, there is an attack going off in the front already somebody is uh, dangling off the front and um, one thing about having all these teams in the race is I think everybody's pretty motivated to uh, try to go after those attacks and so you know at some point you do have to worry about it you have to worry about those attacks because you don't know how strong some of these guys are but at the same time i felt like because the uh, peloton was pretty motivated to go after those attacks with all the teams that are in it um, i felt like i would be carried into a lot of those attacks throughout this so i didn't want to go too crazy too early in this race And I'm already loving this film much better than uh, the day before's, just cause I can actually see what's going on in this one. If you watched my last one, or if you you know watched a, a couple seconds of it before you were like, oh, I can't see anything, I appreciate it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I understand if uh, you had to click off of it or whatever. But um, yeah, this one looks way, way better. And we are moving. So in yesterday's or, or the, uh, the the race the day before this, um, we kind of took that first lap. Uh, it felt like almost a neutral lap where we were just kind to trying to feel it out a little bit and, and we weren't going as fast as we could. Um, this one, it felt like we were racing 
from the get go. Like everybody, get ready. We're gonna go 30 miles an hour and and uh, do this thing. So that 180 degree turn, you you think people kind of slow down, but really, as soon as they come out of it, they are almost sprinting to get downhill right here. And we're hitting 40 miles an hour going down this hill pretty easily. Now I've seen some of these teams in, in some other races before, and I, I kind of know a couple of the guys that are pretty strong. Um, mainly what I wanted to do right here was try to find a good wheel to stick behind. And uh, right here, this guy um, in the new type gear, is kind of what, what I was looking at. Um, he looked like he could be a sprinter for them and I kind of wanted to uh, find his wheel throughout the race and kind of stick behind him. Maybe he was going to uh, be the sprinter for them today and uh, maybe I could uh, follow him to the uh, finish line. Because of the speed of this race, I swear I looked down after the first few laps and was like, it's only been seven minutes. We still have another 33 minutes plus. And I was like, wow, it, you know, this is, it seemed, even though it was about the same, it, almost the exact same time as the day before, it felt longer in this race just because of how fast we were going through each lap. And it definitely felt smoother too. Like I think everybody was pretty pretty good around the turns and um, you know chose chose pretty good lines throughout I think um, there was only one little uh, slip up I think that was in front of me at one point during the race but other than that uh, everything was pretty good throughout the race and, and um, everybody was pretty safe I think checking my wattage coming out of uh, the turns here just to see if I'm um, using too much of a match but it didn't seem like I was it, it, it seemed like I was doing pretty good on the wattage there coming out um, I think I reached about 500 or so but then um, quickly backed off and got back down to zero so I was at least conserving some energy there and then here I did have to push it up the hill just a little bit um, mainly I just didn't want to get too far behind the, uh, the front groups here. And there we go. Another, another slight attack out there on the, uh, outside. But like I said before, I mean, everybody seemed to be motivated to bring those backs, bring those back pretty quickly. This stretch of the hill, and uh, I guess on the backside, um, was the, I guess, the slowest part of the race. And, you know, you carry a lot of momentum going down the hill up until this point. And this is where I was thinking in my head, if I get to the end, that is where I'm gonna have to start my sprint. That's where the slowdown is. So I'm, I'm keeping mental notes throughout the, out the race um, as to where I can, you know, push myself or, or start my sprint or I can move up, things like that. And we are moving. I 
I swear the announcer said there was 50 in this race before we started, but um, I think it only ended up being like 39 or 40 or something like that. It sure does seem like a lot more. But I think there were guys after the first lap or two that uh, were out already. That's how uh, fast this race was. Little to no wind on this day as well. Um, just like the day before, the, uh, the flag poles, I was checking them out. They didn't move at all. Um, so don't have to worry about head or, or tailwind much in this race. Just trying to find a wheel and get a good draft and make my way up slowly. So got to stay under control throughout this race as well you know with with the time limit being uh 40 minutes and then plus two laps and you don't know exactly how fast you're going at, at the time you know um you're not you're not checking out your your garments or your wahoos or whatever you're, you're not looking at all that stuff throughout the race you're just kind of waiting to see when they're going to put out the lap counter on the side there and you know, you got to pace yourself throughout the race. You just never know. I mean, as fast as we were going and, you know, at that time that I looked down just to see that we were only like seven minutes into the race, it it's like, oh, wow, we got we got a while. seems like I'm eating wind but I'm I, I really not like I, I felt like I was getting a pretty good draft out there just um, and you know I'm obviously keeping up with everybody at this point too so um, I really wasn't eating wind and, and I'm not putting down any watts as well throughout that uh, stretch and then here as we go down the hill I am just using my, my weight, my momentum to uh, keep up with everybody. And it looks like if that's not a lapped rider up there, it looks like there's a couple guys up at the front already up there. So the day before when I did the race, um, I was well rested. My Garmin watch that I wear was telling me that my training status and my body battery were both at 100. So I was well uh, prepared and, and well ready for the race um, the day before this. When I woke up on this particular day on the 26th, uh, ready for this race, my uh, training status and my body battery were like at almost their lowest. So it was telling me that I needed to take a rest day and that I needed to rest my body. So I was a little worried about that, but um, at the same time, like you kind of have to take some of those things with a grain of salt as well. Um, you know, sometimes it, you know, technology, or whatever can get in the way of uh, your performance and you don't always want to take that into you know uh, complete thought or anything like that um, I felt like uh, I might be drained a little bit but I think once I get going I'll start feeling better and and I'll start feeling pretty good in this race and, and I can push myself a little bit more 
and and that's kind of the way it was um you know i did feel a little bit drained when i woke up in the morning but once i started you know eating my breakfast and um and i got my my little coffee uh gel that i that i did right before the race once i started doing all that stuff like i kind of woke up and i started feeling better and then once i got into the race and started to go i i felt fine um i don't know if i was a hundred percent strong like i was the day before but you'll see in this race like i'm staying in there i'm not getting spit out the back here i am um and really you know i feel like i'm in decent position at this point in the race too so i'm trying to stay in there um until you know the last few laps where i kind of want to move up a little bit more and it is tough to do races back-to-back -back days like that but um, you kind of have to listen to your body and, and you know, if you've been doing the work beforehand, uh, like your training program, or if you've been riding almost every day and, and um, you're used to it, you know, go off of how you feel really and, and don't worry about the, uh, the technology and, and all that stuff that's telling you that you maybe should take a race, rest or anything like that. It's weird sometimes my, my Garmin you know, I'm doing a, a structured training program and I feel great and I'll be doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing for that training program. But then it'll tell me I'm unproductive or something like that for that day. And I'm like, well, oh, that doesn't make any sense. But um, I think it just has to do with, uh, you know, when I do my indoor trainer, the Garmin software, I guess, is not connecting to my Zwift activity with all the stats that it needs, I guess, to be able to tell it, you know, what whatever um, my productivity was for that day. So it's missing some information. And so that's why I'm getting this unproductive for the day thing. So that's why I said, you know, don't worry about the technology thing so much if you're uh, looking at that. So right here, we are seven laps into uh, this race. And I feel like I'm sitting too far back here. I want to move up a little bit more. Don't want to get caught, you know, spitting out the back or get caught in that yo-yo. Um, so I need to uh, figure out a way to get up a little bit closer here. And uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. My heart rate is pretty low right here, so I um, shouldn't be tired. See what happens. Do I carry the speed up this hill a little bit more? Yep. So I come right back in. In with the Peloton. There we go. Get up in there. There's another attack at the front there. Sticking with it. There we go. All right, we got a couple guys off the front, looks like right there. We're getting a little strung out. Peloton's a little long right here, almost single file ish. I think we're still okay though at this point. Here we go. I get a little bit of momentum going down right here and I'm able to climb back up into the uh, middle of the peloton a little bit more here. I'm gonna fit in.
Ooh, jumped over a thousand watts there. The good thing about that uh, turn though, is even if I do spike up like that, you're going downhill and you end up ha uh, not being able to pedal anyway. So you're, you're essentially, you're, you're spiking up for a second and then you're uh, getting a little bit of a reprieve on your legs as you go down um, until you get to this point right here. You can see all the bunches here. It feels like there's several Pelotons in this race. I should have followed that guy right there a little bit better. It would have taken me up to the front there. And now I'm getting closed in and I'm falling back just a little bit. All right, so I fast forward a little bit here, a um, few laps, and the uh, the big guy right here in the new type, he just uh, went off the front for a little bit, and uh, now he's falling back into uh, the peloton just a little bit here, and uh, we are still pushing along, going close to uh, 30 miles an hour here and getting ready to go down this hill again. And so I don't know how many attacks have been at the front, but everybody has been whew, almost a spin out right there, but uh, caught it nicely and uh, got back in there. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of attacks at the front. And uh, yeah, a lot of people have been motivated to uh, bring those back pretty quickly right here. And uh, so we are all eh, pretty much together. I mean, we're, we're a little bit almost single file at this point, but it's gonna bunch back up right here at the, uh, at the hill point. And that's, every single lap has been like that. Um, kind of stretched out a little bit and then kind of bunched right back up right here um, on this hill. I put in a little bit of a dig to get up this hill to get back with everybody, but uh, nothing too crazy right there. And I think I'm sitting probably around mid pack at this point. Now, the one thing that I, I guess I haven't mentioned yet in this race is, you know, the, with all the teams that are in this race, you know, a lot of people are motivated to uh, bring the attacks back and, and um, you know, uh, counter attack at, at those points. But um, also the other tactics that are going on throughout the race is, you know, the other teammates are trying to uh, keep everybody at bay. Um, trying to keep this speed a little bit slower back in the pack um, so that um, nobody's able to uh, try to move up to those attacks that are going out in the front. Um, so there is a few points coming up here, um, I think in the next few laps, where you can kind of see what's going on in the back of the pack here, where um, teammates are trying to keep people from uh, <laughs> moving on up. Not too many laps left here. Making sure nobody spins out in front of me right there. 
And then we're back on this downhill again. Here we go. I gotta get around these guys. I gotta get back up with the group here. Put in another little dig up this hill. Now, if I'm sitting up closer to the front, I don't think that happens as, as often. And that's what I need to uh, work on just after watching these last two days of uh, races on my GoPros here. Um, just watching those, I, I need to be up front a little bit more. I think in the races that I won last year, I stayed up front pretty much the entire um, race. So I stayed close to the front. I wasn't exactly on the front, like leading the way or anything like that, but I stayed up close to the front to where I could respond to attacks and um, when it was time to take off, um, I was able to. And so I probably need to be up there within the uh, top 10 throughout this race. It also will prevent those yo-yo uh, effects and, and uh, the different surges and things from the uh, back of the peloton. So, yeah, uh, watching these um, watching these videos uh, of me racing, you know, it's it's good to uh, kind of get an idea of uh, where I'm at and what I need to work on. Hopefully, it helps uh, you guys out there too as well. Got a little more bunched up there than uh, I would like. Had to push a 1300 watt right there. I think that was my my biggest wattage right there to come out of that uh, almost 180 degree turn. So that guy had the right idea to go up there on the left. So he used his momentum and kept going and passed up on the Peloton, which is something that I probably should have done right there as well. You know, thinking back at, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that um, I, I should be correcting or should be doing in this race to uh, help better my chances at uh, getting on the podium. Um, but just thinking back at a lot of like my training and stuff like that being a bigger guy in the peloton when there's hills like this you do want to be close to the front or at the front when you hit the hill so that you can kind of sag back into the peloton as everybody else catches up and i've heard that's a good way for bigger guys to uh, stay close to the front and, and uh, keep pace all right three laps to go here everybody's still picking up had to take an overly wide turn there so I didn't get uh, kind of pushed out. And just trying to slot back in behind a wheel here and uh, hopefully be able to take this turn to where I'm not slowing down too much coming out and I don't have to uh, punch it as I go down the hill. There we go, I didn't have to punch it as much. I think we got over 900 watts, but uh, just barely. But that's what, uh, if you're closer to the front, you get to take that turn the way you want to, and you most likely don't have to uh, punch it out of there as, as much as I did. When you're, when you're back in the bunch a little bit more, you bunch up right there, and you may have to, what I did exactly, uh, you know, kinda punch it out of there. And right here, I get on this guy's wheel, because he the last couple laps, he's been doing that, coming up on the left side and then uh, catching up with the uh, front group. So I'm glad I was able to catch his wheel right here. And bring me right up to uh, the front group here. And everybody's getting kind of strung out getting tired at this point see some guys have already fallen off and I'm looking around at this point too because we're coming down to uh, two laps to go I want to see who is uh, who's gonna be their sprinters so I'm looking and seeing you know who could be the the sprinter who who are they trying to set up for 
Um, still looking for attacks. Doesn't seem like there are any attacks or anything going on, but there is, we're kind of spread out here. There, there's a, a lead group, and then we've got this group right here, the chase group that I'm in at the moment. I don't know what's going on with these guys taking their hands off the handlebars. bars. I don't know if that's friendly or not. I've noticed that through part of some of this race that uh, when I've established my position and I start moving back just slightly, I've been letting too many people slot in and I need to be a little bit more aggressive right there and not let people slot in on me because then this is what happens. I get kind of slotted out and then I'm out in the wind and um, I don't need to be doing that. All right, let's see around this hill here. Anybody off? No, it doesn't look like anybody's off the front. You see these tactics right here, this guy in the uh, blue. This is kind of what I was talking about before. You know, they've, they've got teammates trying to block you from uh, going around them right here. And I, I don't know if this is exactly the way to do it. You're going all over the course like this. And, you know, that could be pretty dangerous. Um, so I don't know if that's exactly the way you should do it. But, um, yeah, you can see, you know, that was kind of going on in this uh, peloton. He almost comes over and, and knocks me right there. Uh, but I, I take it a little bit wider so that I can get around him. Don't want to get caught up in that and, and maybe cause a wreck or something like that. So even that front group has broke off into another group. So trying to make my way up to the front group at this point and, and um, the front group has already broken off from this group. So there's a lot of uh, different groups uh, up here at the front. So getting ready to go into this last lap here and getting a little gas going up that hill, trying to uh, get to that front group. So I fall back in try to regroup right here, catch up, uh, catch my breath, get, a, get my legs back under me right here, and then uh, get back ready to uh, punch it again. Here we go, bell lap right here. Fell a little bit behind this group, but I'm also trying to catch my breath a little bit, and I know I'm, I'm coming with a full head of steam around here. I'm gonna catch right back up to this group. But everybody's pushing pretty hard here. pretty good line there. I only hit a little over 800 coming out of there, so I didn't have to waste a, a big watt bomb right there coming out. And uh, I know I'm going to uh, pick up a lot of speed going down this hill, especially in this last lap when I'm pushing a little bit harder and I'm, I'm pedaling a little bit more here. Trying to pass as many people as possible so I can get up there to that uh, front group again. I probably should have punched it right there and I probably would have made it with the momentum I had. I was just running out of steam and didn't quite have enough right there to uh, punch it and I kind of saved it. And here we go. This is what I was talking about earlier in the video, where this is probably the point where I need to go ahead and start getting up to my sprint. Need to punch it a little bit more here. 
and you'll see I, I punch it up. I don't have as, as much punch as I, I should at this point, but uh, I am keeping the others behind me at bay here. And coming around this corner just didn't quite have have the punch that I wanted. Still over 800 watts, still trying to keep everybody at bay behind me, but uh, crossing the line there, nobody passed me or anything like that. And I cross and hit uh, 15th on the day out of, I think 40 um, in the list. So not too bad of a day. Uh, definitely some mistakes throughout the race and um, probably should have made my way up to the front a little bit more. I, uh, looking at the uh, video uh, throughout the course uh, while I'm recording this, I, I see you know there were multiple opportunities for me to uh, move up. Um, you know, obviously hindsight's 2020, and you know I can't really. Um, fault myself on that day just because I know how I felt as well like I, I know that um, I was feeling a little bit tired uh, towards the end of this race and and I had you know hung in there as long as I could and um, you know I tried to uh, I tried to get up there a few times but uh, just didn't quite have the uh, the energy or the wattage to uh, get up there to to be able to sprint for that uh, finish but um, 15th not too not too bad um don't get any like upgrade points or anything for that i think it's like the top seven places or something like that in this in this race but um i feel good about uh, my racing ability for this year and uh, it's only going to get better this year i'm going to keep getting stronger keep uh, training and keep working on um, everything that i've been doing um, over the uh, winter months um, so pretty good weekend I'm, I'm pretty uh, stoked about 8th and then uh, 15th and in, in our and races like this where you know there's some pretty good and uh, strong teams out there and some uh, really good and strong riders as well uh, so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of these guys in some later races this year as well because I'm sure we will see each other at some point because we're all uh, in that uh, southeast region here. Yeah. Uh, find my name there. 15, all right. I'll take it. Yeah, can't be up some of that, right? Yeah. Uh, time to go get a shower, washed up. Uh, 15th place so not too bad uh, he said there was 39 starters and I guess some people dropped out so there's only 36 listed on the list and uh, yeah so eh, I guess you know mid pack a little bit better than mid pack so not too bad for the day really uh, pushed myself at the end trying to get up there but I uh, just didn't have enough to uh, get to that front group going up that hill uh, we'll see uh, you know it's a long year it's cold when it starts warming up we'll see uh, how much better it can get out here but, uh, yeah if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe hit that uh, like button hit that subscribe button hit that bell button so you know when I post videos I'm going to be posting some videos here soon um, hopefully another race here soon if not um, maybe some training videos, things like that. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And, um, you know, if you saw anything else that I may have missed throughout this video that uh, I could do better, I'd, I'd love the feedback. But uh, appreciate you and uh, look forward to uh, some more videos. Peace.